Snyder with Hollywood Heritage. And this year marks the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment uh, that kind of ended the women's suffrage and gave the women a right to vote. So it's a very important year. Um, and Hollywood Heritage and Hollywood Foreign Press uh, to celebrate this is having Mary Mallory uh, speak on a 1914 movie called Your Girl and Mine. Uh, Your Girl and Mine is a lost film, but it was very important to the women's suffrage movement um, to really kind of, again, get a lot of, a lot of backing to uh, the movement. And of course, it got a lot of Hollywood influence as well. Uh, one of the big influencers was Mary Pickford. You know, she was one of the first women actresses to make a million dollars. She was already doing that at that point before we were even able to vote. Uh, and one famous photo that still makes its rounds of Mary Pickford is where she is holding the 1913 uh, Votes for Women newspaper. Again, it was just show that excitement of women being able to vote. Uh, Mary Pickford even said then that, you know, come 1921, as soon as voting is legal, she for sure is going to be one to vote. Uh, Mary Pickford, even after uh, the 19th Amendment was passed and women were able to vote, uh, she was still a very big influencer um, when it came to just campa uh, campaigning for uh, women's rights. Um, she even went to promoting equal rights uh, amendments with SEALs, um, and she did quite a bit of stuff. So I thought if you're going to be tuning in on Wednesday, August 19th, uh, which is a virtual presentation that Mary Mallory is doing, why not bake something uh, that will kind of give you some comfort food, something to enjoy to eat. And I'm going to pick a Mary Pickford uh, recipe. And this recipe comes from uh, Albert, who was the head of the Pickfair staff. Uh, Pickfair was a mansion that was owned by both Mary Pickford and Douglas Fairbanks, and he was the head of the team there. And he was known for making these really meticulous menu cards that went on everybody's seat because most of us know Pickfair really hosted everybody from the Royals to uh, everybody well known in Hollywood. And what he would do is he would write out the entire menu for that evening um, and then he had a recipe card for each dish. Uh, so what we're going to do today is cauliflower au gratin. Uh, both Albert as well as a lot of the chefs at that time there at Pig Fair were French or they had some French influence. Uh, so cauliflower au gratin makes sense. Um, au gratin meaning that we're going to top it with some yummy cheese, lots of cheese. Uh, and also bechamel sauce, which is again one of French, uh, you know, for France and cuisine, uh, there was five mother sauces and bechamel is one of them. Uh, hollandaise sauce is another, tomato sauce is another. But um, the cauliflower au gratin really only uses, you know, a few ingredients. It's not very difficult to make. Um, we're going to need a whole head of uh, cauliflower, of course. Um, we're going to need some good cheese uh, for the au gratin part. I decided to shred about a cup of cheddar cheese and then a half a cut of some gouda, um, just to kind of give it more a little bit more of a smoky flavor to it. Um, for the bechamel sauce, really it's just an even portion of both flour and butter, so I have a fourth a cup of flour fourth a cup butter, and I have a few extra tablespoons of butter just to add to the top before we cook it. Uh, we're going to need some nutmeg, uh, nutmeg because every bechamel sauce really needs some nutmeg, some salt and pepper, um, and then of course uh, one and one fourth cup milk uh, to go in our bechamel sauce. Uh, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and cut up our head of cauliflower to make it some florets. And one thing Albert mentions in his recipe is that after you cut it, you want to go ahead and soak it in some salt water. And the reason for that is if you really do look at some of the older recipes, the proper way to clean cauliflower is you do soak it in some salt water, you know, especially if it's something you just pick from your garden. Cauliflower can be one of the little dirtier uh, vegetables, so letting it soak in that salt water will clean it very well. Even though this was store-bought, um, I'm still going to follow the steps and I'm going to salt it. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start cutting up our cauliflower and then we'll move to our next step. Um, when I cut the cauliflower, and especially being this is a gratin, kind of like a casserole dish, it doesn't have to be pretty or perfect. Um, so what I'm going to do first is just cut the base of the cauliflower off and then with a the paring knife I'm going to go through and start making my florets. So I'm just going to cut this part off and then as you can see we don't need 
any of these leaves anymore. And then I can get in there and start cutting my florets. All right, so now I went ahead and I cut up the florets and I cut them a little bit more finer too because again, it is going into a casserole dish. Um, so what I have it now doing for the next few minutes is just uh, soaking in some salt water. Um, after those few minutes is, are up, I'm gonna go ahead and strain it and rinse it with some water uh, before I start to steam my cauliflower. All right, so I just finished uh, rinsing my cauliflower and I have my little steaming pot here, so I'm just gonna put this in some boiling water. And I'm gonna let our cauliflower steam for about 10 minutes, just until the cauliflower is a little soft and uh, not as tender that way. Um, that'll help uh, with the baking part of it. So while um, our cauliflower is steaming, we're gonna go ahead and start making the bechamel sauce, uh, which again is a very important part of this dish. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start out with heat up my pot. You want, you want a good sized pot, medium sized pot again, just kind of depends on how much you're planning on making. Um, and usually the bechamel sauce, I like to have a good wooden spoon and a whisk when I make this. So I'm going to go ahead first and put my one fourth cup of butter in the pot and we're going to go ahead and melt that. Um, once the butter is melted, then we're going to add the one fourth cup flour but first we just have to get our butter melted. All right, so the butter's pretty much melted, uh, melted now. Also, while we're doing this, um, you wanna go ahead and preheat your oven uh, to 375 uh, degrees for when the gratin goes into the oven. Um, so right now I'm just adding my 1 4th cup flour. And what I'm just gonna do right now is just mix that in with my butter. And we are going to go ahead and just kind of nicely brown once you get that flour and butter all covered. Um, other things that bechamel sauce is called, you might hear it be referred to as a white sauce or a roux sauce because again, it's that mixture of flour and butter. Um, now the most important part with the bechamel sauce is you don't want it to get lumpy. And the lumpy part of it usually happens when we start to add our milk. And my little secret around that is I actually turn the heat off. I find that if you start adding the milk while the heat is still on, that's what tends to help it clump. So I am going to get my whisk now. I'm gonna grab my one and one fourth cup butter. And I'm not gonna add all my milk in there. Sorry, I meant one and one fourth cup milk. Um, I'm not going to add it all at once. I'm just going to add a little bit just to get, just to be able to whisk that flour and butter mixture that I had just added. And then now I'm going to continue to add the rest of my milk while I am still doing a lot of whisking, you know, because this again is what's going to keep my sauce from getting clumpy. And then once I have it all mixed, then I will turn the heat back on my oven. So now I'm gonna go ahead and turn my heat back on my oven. And I'm gonna to continue to whisk. Um, you could even go back to using your wooden spoon for a little bit, but we're actually gonna heat this for, it, it depends on your pot, um, the heat. It could be up to about 10 minutes, because what we wanna do is kind of bring that vegetable sauce up to a, a bubble. Um, and then continue to whisk and stir it as it thickens. And again, just making sure um, that again, that we don't have any clumps in there. All right, so now you can see that my sauce is starting to bubble. So I am now switching to my whisk and just again, keep mixing that um, as it thickens. And while it is thickening, what I'm gonna do is grab my nutmeg and we're going to do about a fourth tablespoon of nutmeg. So we're just going to, nutmegs are these little balls um, that you will get um, in your spice section at the store. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a really good, good rub of nutmeg. I'm also going to add in my salt and pepper. Um, 
one thing I like to do whenever I do cook is I never wait to the end to add my salt and pepper. I always want to make sure I'm adding my salt and pepper throughout the whole baking or cooking process because that way it really helps your salt and pepper become more of a flavor than just the end, end result. So as you can see, it's really starting to thicken well. I'm just gonna do this maybe for about another minute or so, and then I'm gonna add in our cheese. Now, um, to add in the cheese, I have, again, like I said, I'm gonna do about a cup of cheddar, and I'm not gonna use all of it. I'm gonna say maybe about a fourth cup, or maybe a little less, just to be able to add to the top. I'm just gonna turn this down a little, and start mixing in my cheese. Let that cheese start to melt. And then I'm going to also add in most of my Gouda cheese. Maybe I'll save a little for the top. All right, so we have our bechamel so uh, sauce. We're just going to go check in our cauliflower now. So my bechamel sauce is pretty much nice and cheesy. Uh, nice and smooth and my cauliflower is all done steaming so now I got my casserole dish that I buttered um, ahead of time and what we're going to do is and it's up to you if you want to first layer the bottom with some bechamel sauce or if you just want to put your cauliflower in first and and save the sauce for the end but I'm gonna go ahead and just put just a little bit throughout the bottom I'm now going to take my cauliflower and put a nice even row in there. And I'm going to use a spoon that has just some holes in it so that way as I take my cauliflower out, if there's any uh, remaining moisture, it can drain as I pull it out. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is just go ahead and add the rest of my sauce to the cauliflower. Again, once I get it to that casserole dish, I'll smooth it out, spread it. Another interesting fact too I'm spreading this is uh, 1920 was also the year uh, that Mary Pickford and Douglas Fairbanks got married. Uh, so it makes it even more special making a dish uh, from Pickfair, considering it's their 100th anniversary of both Pickfair um, and their marriage. All right, we have that spread. Now I'm going to take the remaining cheese that I have and I'm just going to sprinkle that on top. And that'll kind of help also give it that golden brown. And then I got a little bit of the gouda left. I'm just going to go ahead and also just sprinkle. And as I mentioned too, in the, the recipe, one thing uh, Albert does do is he saves a little bit of butter um, and put some butter on top just again just to help with the browning. Um, I think the extra cheese on top kind of does that uh, but again I kind of want to stick to his recipe. And now I'm going to go ahead and put this in the oven like I said I had it preheated to 375 and I'm going to bake it for about uh, 18 to 20 minutes. Again it really depends on your stove. All right, so it's been about 20 minutes and it's starting to get nice and brown along the edges. Right. Now the next remaining kind of last part is we're actually gonna put this in the broiler for about one to two minutes just so it gets that nice uh, browning to the cheese and the bechamel sauce. I usually put in the broiler on high for about one to two minutes. I like to keep my broiler door open just a little bit just to keep the air circulation plus I can keep an eye on it because I don't want it to over brown. Um, so that's what I'm going to do next. It's been in a broiler for about two minutes now and I'm going to go ahead and pull it out of my broiler and what you will now notice is that cheese has that browning now. And that again is part of the what an au gratin is. Like I said, it's cheesy, it's a cheese, and it's the browning um, on top of that. So we have very nice uh, cauliflower au gratin. Um, I even pulled out one of my dishes that we have um, that was from Pick Fair. We have several different sets of their plates and dishes. For the occasion, let's go ahead um, 
in a perfect world, I would let this cool a little bit more, but I just want to kind of let you see how nice and cheesy our cauliflower au gratin is. This will be a, a great thing, like I said, to make and eat while you're listening to Mary Mallory's presentation on the women's suffrage and the 19th Amendment, as well as the 1914 lost film, uh, Your Girl in Mine. So I'm just going to take a little bite. It's probably going to be hot, but perfect. So great comfort food, great for the evening of joining us with Hollywood Heritage and Hollywood Foreign Press and Mary Mallory's presentation again Wednesday, August 19th. Uh, just visit hollywoodheritage.org. Um, they'll give you ticket information, time information, um, etc. So until next time, I'm Angie Shea with Hollywood Heritage. Have a good evening. Mm -hmm.